Hello, and welcome back to Sharing a Chapter a Day. This is Do, Ra, Mi, and today I will be reading Chapter 24 of Engagement in Peril by Dara Ado Sok. Chapter 24 is titled, The Outsiders. My friends during 8th grade were as follow. Narone Aaron, a Cambodian male several months younger than me, but the biggest of our crew. He was tall and large in stature and weight, but very shy and quiet. And he was always the one being picked on by Hoy Vincent, who knew Aaron since grade school. Hoy was one of the lightest skinned complex Cambodian that I had ever seen. He was dorky and at times straight out stupid. He liked to tease, push, and deliberately punch on, punch on girls, no matter if he knew them or not. I guess that, that's how he gets his kicks. But he was our friend all the same. That son of a bitch now has a wife and several kids. Well, so does Aaron. There was also Terrence, a Filipino boy who was my counterpart. At time, he and I were the tightest of friends almost like that of Adam and I were when I was in Aurora. Who would have thought that years later I'd fall for Terrence's sister, Beverly? There was Manny, Czech, Chea, and Kamein were also our Cambodian friend who usually hung out and played with us during our recess and lunchtime. And then of course there were a couple others. During our breaks we would usually play a game called One Foot one foot was a game where you jump and balance around on one foot in a square box about 10 feet by 10 feet. The purpose of the game is to tag everyone out while everyone without landing on both feet. And those who are doing the running are not allowed to run out of this, the large drawn out square. The game can be played by single or double chaser. Sometimes Terrence and I would team up and go against the other teams. We call ourselves the carrot and the rabbit. I was the rabbit and he was the carrot. We had a lot of stamina then and quite quick on our one foot. We were the best jumper duo then. Besides one foot we also played BB Bridges, a game where we use a tennis ball or racquetball as the object that we had to catch when thrown against the wall. For those who dropped the ball, he or she would have to run toward the wall and touch the wall while being do while dodging and escaping from pursuer whom would try to kick, punch, and swing and maim at them. The only thing that we weren't allowed to do was throw the ball at the running person. Once the person touches the wall, he or she is safe from being beaten on. We also played other sporting games like basketball and football during our free time together at lunch on the grassy fields and blacktop. We were all quite competitive to them, and of course we were trying to impress the teenage girls that were in our minds, thoughts, and hearts. We also threw a tennis ball around across the grassy field, and at time, it would end up on the roof's gym, on the gym's roof. And I, being stupid and witty and knowing how to get up the roof easily, I was always the one to run up the side of the co concrete gym, climb up several poles, and up to the roof I would be. Then I would dash across the roof, finding tennis balls and other ac accidental misplaced ball up there, and send them down. Now instead of going down the same way as I had come up, I would I would get careless and thrust myself from the roof onto a pole that stood about five feet away from the building, and then slide down the large metal flagpole, trying to get the attention of the aid crowd. At times, I would be caught by the school teachers and reprimanded for my stupidity. But I was impressing the id crowd then. And that was enough for me to keep going, keep doing it. I even heard Kelly gave me the nickname, Eclipse. Since during my many jumps from the roof to the flagpole, I had blocked out the sun as she watched me in awe during my stupidity to impress her and her friends then. As I often do during our lunch and break recess. Imagine the things I would have done to Kelly to get attention, her attention. 
All I wanted was to be accepted into the whole world, and no matter how much I had to sacrifice, I was glad and willing to do it. And if it meant that Kelly knew who I was, I would have given her my all. All she had to do was ask or tell me to do so. I would have sacrificed myself for her then. We all became good friends then, and some of us continued the balanced friendship throughout our high school year together as well. I still keep in contact with Aaron to this day. He is now married and even Vincent is married and has three daughters. You can say that Aaron is my best friend. It's just me who hasn't been lucky enough to be hitched. Not to say I haven't had my moments in the sun, but then again, I am a bastard and a bastard torn as I will continue to be. It seems so far any relations that I've been involved with that are passionate and to the point of long-lasting love and affection, I end up ruining it and losing it altogether for, for one reason or another. I guess I'm just unlucky with love and relationship altogether. You'll find out more as you read on about my misfortune with engagements and marriages. But in all, I'm still optimist about my love life. I know she's out there. Thank you for listening. This is the end of chapter 24. Be on the lookout for chapter 25. Titled, Novus Eager Beaver Sex Drive. Until next time, this is Do, Ra, Me, and I'll see you later. Thank you.